Hi, my name is Alan Tudyk, and this is The First Time. When I got the audition for Resonating, the first time I ever read it, heard the name, because I didn't know the comics, they had evidently already auditioned hundreds of people and were ready to give up. That's when I came in. Excuse me, sir. You Dr. Harry Vanderspiegel? What can I help you with? It's in my wheelhouse because it's kind of a, since it's an alien, he's an alien inhabiting a human body in a, in a world he doesn't understand. He, he creates the words in a way that every word is its own thing. It's, it's, it's like it's the mechanical work that goes behind making sound and walking and moving and just basic balance. And it's kind of a thing I can do. Definitely I've done robots and there's a similarity. There's, there's similarity there. So I went in and did a scene about, I think it's in the trailers of, of me where I first see the dead body and I think it's awesome. Uh, I mistake a woman for being dead. I'm like, oh yes, yeah, she's been dead for a week and she wakes up, get away from me. It's really funny. So it, it, it also has a lot of humor in it. And uh, the character is very smart, but also very stupid, which that's right in my wheelhouse too. It comes, some things come naturally more naturally than others. And uh, yeah, now we make 10 of them. Can't wait for people to see him. The first time I read the Firefly television script for the pilot, I was already cast. I need Kaylee in the engine room, please. When I auditioned for it, there was only two pieces of paper that you got. And uh, it was the scene where uh, my character Wash is playing with dinosaurs. Uh, I think we should call it your grave. Uh, oh. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. Ha! Ha, ha, ha. And which really gives you a sense of the tone of the show. And I was just in love with it uh, from that. And then there was um, something with my wife, uh, my, uh, my fake wife, uh, the character Zoe. That excuse is getting a little worn, honey. It's not an excuse, dear. I remember when I got the, the pages, I was like, this is, what is this? I, I can't audition to go be in a show for seven years probably, <laughs> uh, with just two pages of information about it. And I called a friend who I'd gone to school with who had, was working more than, more than me. And I was like, hey, should I do this? And he said, who's, who's, who's doing it? I said, Joss Whedon, do it. Like before I, Whedon, do it, came out. <laughs> like, do it, do it, you've got to do it. Uh, so I sent my audition in and then two months later, um, <laughs> I completely forgotten all about it. I got a call and they said they want to test you for Firefly. I was like, I, that's a mistake. I don't even know what that is. I've never heard of it. And uh, they explained, oh, right, that thing. And then I auditioned. And then I read the script. First time I performed a motion capture was an iRobot. Answer me, Canner. My name is Sunny. I loved it. I showed up in Vancouver. Uh, to do Sonny, the robot. And I had all these ideas and they said, we're gonna get you a, someone to work with you for movement to decide how the robot moves. And I was like, I, I think they said choreographer was the word they used. I was like, ah, ugh, not into that. And there was, we're, we're, you can meet him, we're all gonna sit down, we're all gonna talk. So we went to the production uh, office to meet and I'm sitting inside this waiting room and I've got books with me. I've got the Alexander Technique, Mime, a book of Mime, Lecoq School of, of Masks. And there's this guy sitting on the other end of the table, sort of catty corner to me. And we're sitting there waiting to go into this conference room. And he and I, he's like, are you, I'm sorry, are you, are you Alan? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we, he came up and he pulls out books from his backpack and they were all very similar to my book. So I was like, this is gonna be great. And that's what we would do, go into a studio for an hour, at least in the mornings and just work out how the robot walked. And I put on a big spandex uh, panty. It was green and not attractive and wore it for six months. And Will Smith would comment on my butt. I was cast in Dodgeball. 
I'm working with this guy. He's fitting me for a gold tooth. And I go, wait a second, is your name Richard Snell? And he goes, yeah, how do you know me? I was like, my first movie ever was Patch Adams. <laughs> Beanie, how does Hitler say hello? <laughs> I had gotten hives. <laughs> The night before I had gone to Chinatown, San Francisco, where we were shooting and I ate something, still don't know what it was, but I woke up the next morning, I had hives all over my face and then they would like retreat from my face and they'd be on my back and they'd go on the top of my head. It was nuts. I got to work. I ended up having to go to the doctor and they gave me adrenaline shot. And after I'd drinking a bunch of coffee, so my performance in Patch Adams is is chemically enhanced. Maybe he knows why we're cramped. <laughs> but. Richard Snell, who was a guy in charge of giving me a weird, squirrely eye, saw my hives and was like, I got to take pictures of this. This is what I do. Makeup and hair. So he's, I got my shirt off and there's this, I'm doing like hives photos. So Richard and I know each other. Anyway, Richard Snell, who was like, what is this? You're, you're a pirate. I'm, and, he, and he's trying to figure out what's going on. I'm like, oh no, it's, it, it isn't making fun of pirates. It's a guy who thinks he's a pirate. He's delusional and he thinks he's a pirate, and, but he lives in the world and everybody supports his delusion. He's like, oh, cause I'm a pirate. What? He's like, I'm a, I'm a rum runner. We are pirates. Actually, there's a pirate festival coming up this next week. And I was like, well, please, please can I come? And they invited me. Uh, Missy Pyle went also, uh, who was in that movie. And uh, it was a blast. It was kind of like Scarborough Fair, but only pirates. And a good place to buy a, a dagger if you need one, or, or like to practice shooting arrows. Oh, it was a good time. First time I met Frank Oz was doing a death at a funeral. I auditioned for that after, late in the process. And it was one of those, I just, the tape I sent in. And I, to play a guy who's completely high. And then I got a phone call. Hey, it's Frank Oz. I was like, what? Hello? Hi? And he's like, yeah, I, gosh, I really like your tape. That was really good. Nobody here is on board with you. <laughs> Being in this movie. So we're gonna to have to jump a few hurdles if you want to be in it. I was like, I can jump. Let's 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 hoop it up. I wasn't English, you know. That was another thing. It was, it was all English people. There's the there's the other death of funeral that's in the American version. This is the English with the pasty white people. Um, I'm in the, I'm in the pasty white group. Really, Frank Oz just said this is my guy, and uh, the producer finally said, okay, you you get you get to have him. And I showed up. They were already in rehearsals. I showed up that day. Then I said, this is the office and there's Tom over there on the copier and they're, oh, they're answering the phones and there's Gina and hello. And then, um, so I don't know what you're planning for the rest of the day, but what do you think about rehearsal? There's rehearsing like, oh, they've been doing it for two hours. I'm like, what are we, I'm sorry guys, but let's get to rehearsal. And I walked in and they were already rehearsing the, the actual funeral scene. And it was like, Frank goes, oh, oh, sorry, pause. Everybody, this is Alan, he's playing Simon. Simon, you're sitting here, great. And you're high, because <laughs> my character was high as a guy. And immediately started laughing <laughs> uh, inappropriately in the scene. The first time I was introduced to K2SO was in a, like a FaceTime with Gareth Edwards who directed it. And I didn't think I was really auditioning for the role. I'm K2SO. I'm a reprogrammed Imperial droid. I thought he was talking to me because uh, I had done Sonny in iRobot and I knew what motion capturing a robot is. And that's how I had the conversation with him. I was like, so how are you gonna do this? And he's like, well, we're, and I was not at all auditioning for the role or trying to be anything. I was, I was collaborating from the very beginning. He's like, whatever movement you do or you know, whoever does it, whatever movement they do, even if they make a mistake, I wanna capture that. I was like, no, no, you don't. You tell yourself you want that, but that is not what you want. Don't marry yourself to this whole idea of some kind of purity in the artistic process because this is, you have an opportunity to do more with this and you should. And that's how I, that's how we talked. And then he wanted to meet me afterwards 
And then he just gave me the job in the room. It was so crazy. First time I did the Joker, I was asked by Patrick and Justin to audition for it. We had done Powerless together. I said, I'll give it a shot. But in this fight, I'm afraid I have to take a dive. And I just threw it on my phone, like send it in in 10 minutes. I couldn't believe I got it. <laughs> because I was like, this is, first of all, Mark Hamill should do it. And then secondly, here's just my idea of it. And they gave it to me. It's cool, because I'm also Clayface. And I, they said I would get Clayface. But um, Joker was just unbelievable. That's, that's big stuff.